This week's program was filmed at Medical City, Dallas. Founded in 1974, Medical City is recognized for its state-of-the-art medical facilities and commitment to excellence in patient care. Located in Dallas, Texas, the hospital's medical team consists of more than 1,150 physicians, many of whom are recognized as the world's best in their specialties. Medical City, specialists in life. Welcome to Platforms, the life-lifting news program for women. Now, here's your host, Siobhan Palmer. Hey, welcome everybody to Platforms, the life-lifting news program for women. My first guest is Dr. Vallabh Janardhan. Dr. Janardhan is the director of the Texas Stroke Institute here at Medical City, Dallas. He joined HCA North Texas from the University of Minnesota Medical Center. He completed his vascular fellowship at Harvard Medical School. Dr. Janardhan, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me here. It's an absolute honor to have you. Um, talking about a very, very important topic for our audience, uh, strokes, and um, my understanding is it's the third leading cause of death in this country, which I think m many people probably aren't aware of. Absolutely. Um, one of the things is that we have been able to achieve good community education with heart attacks because it affects quite a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the new frontiers in medicine is the treatment for brain attacks. And strokes are nothing but heart attacks of the brain. And so we also call them as brain attacks. And they are the second largest um, cause of uh, death worldwide. They're also the third largest uh, cause of uh, death in the United States, and they're also the most leading cause of long-term disability in the United States. Oh, that's remarkable. And my understanding to you define this part of the country, Texas, and the southwestern corridor is that you call it the stroke belt. Tell us what that means. Yes, if you look at the data from the CDC, um, what we found is the maximum number of mortalities for people with brain attacks happen from the uh, southern coast from Texas to the southeastern coast. And it's not entirely clear the reasons for that, but those are the facts. And so one of the ways we uh, call this is the stroke belt because it helps us garner our strength and our resources to be able to fight this disease in this region. Not only have we higher prevalence rates for the disease, uh, we also have higher mortality rates suggesting that we need to treat this disease better and uh, spread the word to the community so they understand how to recognize these symptoms. Well, let's uh, follow up. What are the classic symptoms of a stroke? So um, there is an acronym called FAST which uh, really helps uh, us understand what brain attacks are. One of the key problems with brain attack symptoms is that they're all negative symptoms. So if you look at heart attacks, somebody has chest pain, and so they come in with pain to the hospital. So it's a positive symptom. You wake up with chest pain. Exactly. Whereas with brain attacks, it's always a loss of strength in the arm, loss of sensation, loss of speech, loss of vision. So there's always a negative symptom. So people have a tendency to um, not uh, give as much importance to it or think that it'll get better. So the acronym FAST is a useful way. If the face starts looking funny, it gets twisted, right. if the arm starts drifting down when you raise it up, and uh, if the speech comes out slurred, then it's time to call 911 and come to the hospital. So F-A-S-D, if the face uh, is abnormal, right. if the arm starts drifting down, if the speech comes out slurred, then it's time to call 911. So the FAST acronym is a good way to uh, recognize and remember uh, the symptoms of stroke. You know, from a layman's perspective, the fact that you call an attack of the brain already gives me a lot better perspective. And I understand there are two major types of attacks of the brain or strokes. Tell us about that. That is absolutely correct. With heart attacks, you usually have a blockage in a blood vessel that's preventing blood flow to the heart. Mm -hmm. And so the heart muscle actually has, is crying out for with pain. Um, in brain attacks, you have two types of brain attacks. One is a blockage type brain attack, wherein you have either a blockage or a blood clot blocking the blood vessel, thereby starving the brain cells mm -hmm. with blood. And uh, the second type is called a bleeding type brain attack, wherein one of the blood vessels going to the brain ruptures or bursts, and therefore the brain cells are now drowning to death. And an example of a bleeding type brain attack is a brain aneurysm. It can also be caused because of high blood pressure um, and a few other conditions. So you have two broad categories, a blockage type brain attacks called ischemic strokes and bleeding type brain attacks called hemorrhagic strokes. 
Let's talk about there's some remarkable cutting edge therapies to treat strokes. Um, why don't you share with us about that? With um, the advances in um, medical device technology and advances in research, a lot of new therapies have come out to be able to actually help people with brain attacks. Mm -hmm. In 1996, the FDA approved the first clot dissolving drug TPA, which is like Drainex, where you give it to open up a pipe uh, that's yeah. already blocked. But one of the problems with that is it can only be given within three hours from symptom onset. And so patients need to be able to diagnose the stroke, identify it, come to a hospital, and get therapy within three hours. And so that can be challenging, and national utilization rates have suggested that only three to four percent of the people with strokes come to the hospital fast enough to be okay, able to get that uh, therapy within three hours. So as a consequence, there have been a lot of device development to be able to extend the time window so that we can actually have patients coming in at a later time windows more than the three hour time window, so therefore we can treat more people. Right. And so now we can, um, it started off with up to six hours we could treat somebody, then eight hours, and now with advanced imaging studies, potentially even up to 12 hours we can treat people after uh, the last time they were seen normal. This is remarkable. Well, these are relatively non-invasive therapies. Years ago, you know, people would have to have their brains exposed and so on. It was very intrusive type um, surgery and now this is remarkable how non-invasive it can be. Correct. What we do is we actually go in with a tiny keyhole in the groin, in the femoral artery, and then we navigate these tiny plastic tubes called catheters over wi uh, wires, which are extremely thin uh, uh, wires, and we take them up to the neck and brain blood vessels and we do all the procedures through those tiny plastic tubes. And at the end of the procedure there's a band-aid in the groin. Uh, there's no incision, there's no suture, and we've had a lot of developments for treatments, catheter-based treatments for both blockage-type brain attacks as well as catheter-based treatments for bleeding-type brain attacks. Mm -hmm. So remarkable. I know that a couple of your mentors were responsible for the development or discovery of these um, cutting-edge um, therapies. Could you share with us who those talented gentlemen are? Yes, uh, I, I trained uh, at Cornell in Columbia in interventional neuroradiology and uh, my mentor Pierre Gobain um, was at UCLA when uh, um, he was closely involved with the development of the uh, Mercy concentric uh, device which is like uh, the corkscrew device to pull out the clot and uh, another uh, very um, uh, 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 smart gentleman, uh, Arani Bose, um, is, a, um, is a wonderful uh, friend and colleague who has helped develop the vacuum suction device for uh, brain attacks, which is the penumbra stroke system. And they both FDA approved for the treatment of brain attacks, which are of the blockage type. Beautiful. Dr. Janar, we're going to have to go to break here in just a moment, but when we come back, we want to continue this fascinating conversation um, about strokes and the wonderful therapies that are available today. Folks, this is Siobhan Palmer with Platforms, a life-lifting news program for women. We'll be back in just a moment. The Texas Stroke Institute is dedicated to compassionate, multidisciplinary, and quality care for patients who suffer stroke and disorders of the head, neck, brain, and spine. Physicians at TSI offer patients cutting-edge treatment options for neurovascular disorders, including minimally invasive catheter-based therapies for adults and children. TSI encourages academic and research excellence, community awareness, and prevention education. The Texas Stroke Institute is a collaborative initiative that includes 11 North Texas HCA hospitals. The goal of TSI is to develop an effective and resource-efficient plan to reduce the morbidity, mortality, and economic burden of stroke in the region by incorporating medical education and participating in research. Texas Stroke Institute physicians practice multidisciplinary medicine to drive best practice in patient care. Their vision is to become the first system in the North Texas region to offer multi-facility comprehensive stroke care. Texas Stroke Institute, Dallas and Plano. For more information, visit TexasStrokeInstitute.com. 